We use the pouring technique to create a lovely pattern on the surface of the drink. And I'm not even going to give you guys a chance to get a picture of this because it doesn't match our standards. So, uh... Hello, my name is Michael Phillips. I'm the 2010 World Barista Champion and the Director of Education for Blue Bottle Coffee internationally. And today we're going to talk about how to make a cappuccino. Now, for a cappuccino, you've got some core ingredients. We've got some wonderful coffee. Today we're using the Hayes Valley Espresso. You have delicious ice cold milk. You've got, of course, water being plumbed into your equipment. And you'll have all the tools you need to make that same delicious drink that we make for you in our shops. One of the defining characteristics of a cappuccino is that it's about a five to six ounce beverage, so it's usually nice and proper. That keeps the ratio nice and tight. So the very first step is we want to make sure that our cup's nice and hot. We're going to add a little water off the machine here. This is going to keep it at a high temperature so that it maintains all of the heat and we don't have to take our milk to such a high temperature, uh, which lets us keep a little bit more of the sweetness out of it. The next step, we want to get our puck ready. So this is referred to as a portafilter. You got the basket right here. This is where you're going to put your coffee that you've ground and are preparing to extract. Um, you want to make sure it's nice and clean and dry, which is what we use our portafilter towel for. And we're really precise about this. So we actually use digital scales to measure the weight to make sure we're super specific on it, down to the tenth of a gram. Got our grinder here. I'm going to run just a little bit through to make sure everything we're getting is nice and fresh. So our grinder is going to dose a timed out version of coffee into here, but it's probably not as precise as we want, so we double check. So right now I'm at 19.5. I want to add a little bit more. And there we go. Now I'm at 26, so I have to use this process. This next step is called leveling, and that's where we shift the coffee grounds around the top of the basket to try and get a nice and even surface. So the next step, you want to compress this bed of coffee down just a little bit. Uh, to do that, we use this right here. This is a tamper. It's like a chef's knife. Everybody has one that fits their hand just right. You want to make sure your portafilter is nice and level. You want a line coming straight up from that through your elbow, and then you compact it nice and evenly. The most important parts is you want to make sure it's nice and level because that's going to affect how fast the water goes through the various parts of the puck. So now that we have the portafilter tamped, we're ready to lock it in and start pulling our shots. So we want to get the water out of that cup. Again, we've got another scale up here. Uh, the three big variables we pay attention to is the dose, so the amount of coffee, the yield, the amount of espresso going into the cup, and the time that it takes. I've got a little timer right here. So, I'm going to flush a little water through the group head. Lock it in nice and tight. And then we're going to pull that shot. Now, for the Hayes Valley, uh, this is a very, very tight extraction, right? 20 grams of coffee in for 20 grams of coffee out. That's what we would refer to as a reasonably short shot. Uh, but we want to slow that extraction process down. So we're aiming for about 30 to 35 seconds overall time to get it to taste just right. Now the time it takes for that to happen is what's really going to affect the flavor. A uh, low 20 second shot is going to be a very sour, unbalanced shot. Uh, for the haze, we tend to like something between 30 and 35 seconds to get that nice chocolatey, really clean flavor. If you go a little bit longer than that, say 40 seconds or even higher than that, the shot's going to start to taste excessively bitter. 33 seconds, right in the pocket. So as you can see, that is a really nice, lovely shot that we have there. So now that we've got a well-prepared shot that falls into the parameters just the way we want, we're going to steam up some milk and finish up this cappuccino. Now when you're steaming, you want to take this steam on tip that has a few little holes in it that that hot air jets out through, and you want to have it right at the surface of the milk in your pitcher because that's going to let it whip in the air to create the texture that you're looking for. 
once you've added the desired amount of texture, you're gonna lift that pitcher up uh, so that it's not whipping in any more air, but it's still bringing that temperature up right into the zone that you want. Steaming is gonna be really quick. It's gonna take about five to six seconds on this machine. Home machines may take a little bit longer, but overall, this is one of those experiences where most people, you know, you blink and it's done. You wonder what happened. So we have it adjusted right there. I've got that tip at the surface. And turn that on. You can hear that air whipping in. You don't wanna to do too much. And then, that quick. You wanna make sure you wipe off your steam wand and give it a little purge at the end. I'm gonna give my espresso one more little swirl. A really great thing to do after you've steamed your milk. Tap it on the counter and give it a nice swirl. We call that polishing. That's gonna take what was a rougher texture and give it a nice shine so it's got that, that white gold, that Cadillac milk. And then you're gonna combine the two with latte art. Um, there's a lot to be said about this and it takes some baristas a lifetime to learn really well. So I'm not gonna try and describe it to you too much. I'm just gonna show it to you and act like it's a mystical talent that only professionals can develop after years of practice. And that right there is a finished cappuccino. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Pardon me.